Hi dancers, welcome to another episode on Plea for the People. I'm so delighted that you're able to find us and join us today. My name is Mimi and today I will be giving a beginner through intermediate level online ballet class. What's unique about our class today is that we will start off by a lecture portion that explains the importance of heart rate and how we calculate and reach our desired or target heart rate today. So we're going to be talking about that and then we will dive back into our dancing portion of our class. Let's go ahead and have a wonderful time. Thank you everyone for tuning into this episode here today on Plea for the People. And I will be starting off our class today by giving a presentation on how to use ballet to take care of the heart. And what I mean by that is that today we'll be talking about our heart health. And before our class, today we will be diving into how to find your resting heart rate, your target heart rate, your activated heart rate, and also your maximum heart rate in order to compare and contrast the different levels of intensity that ballet may be able to bring or uplift, therefore um, helping you to reach your optimal health. So on our first slide here, as we can see, we will be learning how to just find our resting heart rate. And it's simply a way to measure how many pulsations that you feel, how many, basically how many times your heart would beat um, when your body is at rest before you get started with our episode today on Plea for the People. And so the first way to uh, find that is to, um, you can um, find your pulse um, on your wrist here, it, like this photograph is showing you how to do. Um, you don't wanna just kind of resting your fingertips lightly on your skin, you wanna apply some pressure in order to find that pulse. If you're having a difficult time finding it, um, another option is also tracing your peace fingers um, together and find that big, um, 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 nerve or, or that uh, vein that you can find right below the jawline. You incline your head a little bit, tilting it to the side slightly, and you should be able to find your pulsation under your neck. So that's a second option to find it. And the goal is to um, count uh, and feeling the pulsation of your body um, for about 30 seconds and uh, we're going to do this all together um, visually with me when we go back to um, the um, the dancing portion of our class but um, you will be calculating how many times you feel the pulsation for about 30 seconds and when the timer goes off simply you can start counting uh, stop stop counting excuse me and so um, after that uh, you're going to multiply your number by the number two in order to find your total beats per minute so that you can uh, know accurately what is your resting heart rate. We have the ballerina here sort of resting on her knee here, taking a little nap. Um, so that's how we're going to find our heart rate, resting heart rate. Going over to how do we calculate our activated heart rate or at the end of class, uh, we're going to come back to the same activity, um, repeating step one and two here. And then that would be our activated heart rate. So um, uh, it is my goal and it's also my hope that your heart will go up by the end of class and we are elevating that number so that we can reach towards your desired or target heart rate, which I will be talking about in a little bit. And um, finding your maximum heart rate, uh, this one doesn't even include finding a pulse at all, so it's a little easier and simply you're going to be just plugging and chugging your nuts, a few numbers here, some magic numbers here. And the first magic number here is the number 220 and you will be, um, sorry I'm just finding some kind of an annotation device um, here so that you can see it a little bit more obviously. Um, just bear with me for a sec, here we go. So yeah, the number 220. You're gonna subtract uh, your age from the number 220 and that will be your maximum heart rate. Basically that is the, the fa quickest or the fastest your heart can beat per minute. And for example, if you're 20 years of age, subtract 20 from the number 220, you will have your 200, which is your maximum heart rate. Or if you're 65, you're gonna do the same thing and your maximum heart rate is 1. 
55. Pretty simple, pretty um, straightforward. So that's how you're gonna find your maximum heart rate. And we're gonna move over to our next slide on how to find your target heart rate. And this might be just a little bit more complicated. However, this is, um, oops, let me clear the um, drawing. There we go. Um, yes, so finding your target heart rate, it's pretty straightforward as well. Um, again, your target heart rate is, um, it's actually a magical range and it's your desired heart rate or your ideal heart rate. And this is when you can um, achieve your optimum health. And so um, it basically is the 50 to 70 percent range of your maximum heart rate, the number that we just found by subtracting it, subtracting it from uh, 220. And so all you have to do is to just um, multiply your maximum heart rate by the number 0.5 or 0.7, and that range that you find in between is your um, target heart rate, or AKA the target heart rate zone. So every single time when you come to ballet, or maybe going to the gym, or whatever exercises that you will be doing, um, you want to achieve um, this zone as much as you as you can, so that quote unquote you can be in the zone and you can um, just overall staying uh, healthier. And for example, if uh, we're going to go back to the same example with the 20 year, 20 year old, so subtract that by 220, you get 200 uh, beats per minute. And then um, the next thing that you will see is the um, um, a little bit more detailed part in which you have to multiply that uh, beats per minute from the maximum heart rate by 0.5, which you will get 100 beats per minute. And then 200 multiply by 0.7 or 70%, it's 140. So therefore, this person's target heart rate zone for a 20-year-old person will be 100 to 140 beats per minute. And so, um, so that person knows basically what the um, ideal heart rate for that person will be um, when he or she is exercising. We're going to dive into the next portion of our um, lecture, which will explain why is it important that we achieve your target heart rate or why a person would want to be uh, living their best life in this zone. And um, just a few of the benefits, which are to improve your overall health and helps recovery. Um, it can also help you improve basic endurance and fat burning abilities and it improves aerobic fitness. Um, aerobic uh, just means exercises that you can do um, for a durational amount of time. Uh, the opposite would be anaerobic, which are exercises. I'm just going um, a little bit off topic here, but um, in case you might be curious or want to know, but anaerobic just means that you are um, achieving your maximum amount of exertion towards an activity. It could be sprinting. It could be like a 30 minute um, jumping jacks. You know, you're just being very uh, rigorous. And then you're gonna be so out of breath that you have to take a break uh, in between exercises. So, but aerobic exercises are things that you can do for a longer period of time, such as maybe um, going for a run uh, or on the treadmill. Uh, dancing, um, um, and maybe Pilates or something like that. Those are all aerobic uh, fitness activities. And then you want also increase your maximum performance capacity. And when you continue to live in your target heart rate zone, uh, eventually it will help you develop maximum performance and speed. So those are just a few of the benefits that we can, um, we can count on when you are living in your target heart rate. And then um, today I want to give you guys um, at the end of class a little chance to also a time to also um, um, give yourself a little self-assessment here and uh, jot down your, your uh, resting heart rate and then also uh, notating your ac activated heart rate. We're at, the, at the end of the class, we're going to be doing um, the active heart rate um, calculations. And then you also want to know what is your target heart rate. Perhaps right now during this um, lecture, you might be pausing the video and you might be finding out already uh, what your numbers are on a piece of paper. 
right? So that would be really helpful um, already to get a head start here. And then um, whether you, you met your threshold of your target heart rate today or not, and if you did not, then how can you improve your heart rate uh, next time you come and dance with us? So those are just some reflections questions that you can think about today and just to see where your heart is at today. I appreciate you all sitting through my first portion of our class and I hope you will take your dancing to heart today literally and uh, so thank you so much everyone and now we're gonna go ahead and find our resting heart rate to begin. See you soon. Welcome back, dancers. I hope you walked away with newfound knowledge that's going to be applicable for today's class. Without any further ado, we will find our pulse, uh, whether it's finding it um, on your wrist or on your neck. Okay, either way, it works. So uh, make sure that you can feel it before we begin. I will pull up the timer right now on our screen. And once I hit play or start, I will be completely muted so that you can hear your pulse and feel your pulse. I hope that you um, have your uh, position ready and I'm pulling up the video right now for us. And let me make sure that it's very big so you can see it. And by the end, you will be able to hear it. Ready, set, begin. and stop counting answers. And let's um, uh, record that number back to um, your piece of paper or a screen or a phone, wherever that you are putting that number and multiply that number by two. And that is your resting heart rate. So just remember that number and let's go ahead and get started with our dancing. Plies or bending of the knees. We're going to begin in first position on prepared front and side. A plie and a stretch, and again, and a stretch. Full ground plie and seven and eight. Parallel, folding forward all the way. Clasp your opposite of elbows, release, rolling up slowly, taking the full eight count, ton to side. Two ground plies, two, three, Four, second one, let's reverse our arm. Six, seven, and eight. Side stretch towards your chair or apparatus to begin. Then find your balance, finding the center of where you have to be today. Then folding away, six and seven, seven, tendu around fourth. Two, one plie, two, double plies, and a stretch. Again, one slow, two, two quicks, two parallels. Folding forward, rolling up, and stay back to turn it out. Tondu third, a plie, just like in first. Three and four, one full round in third. Seven and eight, folding straight forward, rolling up, and let's do a quarter round to the back. Turn out seven and eight. Squeezing into your tight susu, find your balance. Arms up, six, release, and finish. That's all, and then we're gonna be going over to the left side. Follow me, dancers. Here we go. Prepare and present. Two plies to begin. And a stretch. Nice and slow. Mindful rod all the way down. Knees over those toes. Parallel stretch front all the way. We have a lot of time here. Finding your opposite elbows. Finding your fourth position and 
come up to the air. One, two, stretch, repeat. Turn it out from the top of the hips. Rotate front, stretch. from first, arm prepares front, open side, a front, and a close, and a front, flex, point, and close, same thing, to the side, and a side, and flex, and point, to the back, same idea, same pattern, same type, and one inside to the side, plie, a, add your quarter, bra, break, back, and a two, Reverse, flex, point, and same thing to the side. Side, flex, point, point, close, and a front. And a front, flex, point, inside, side, just once. Plie, and stretch, plie, force arch. Heels down and return. Second time we go, all the way up and hold. Relevate, find your balance and squeezy. 
inner thighs, arms to the side, suspend, and finish. Follow along with me, super slow tondu, super mindfully um, executed. Here we go. Lifting tall from the spine, we go front. Draw the toes back, hit up front. Flex in a point, side, on to side. We go side, flex, point, we go back. Lifting very tall from the supporting hip, each time, flex and point. Inside, side, in, plie, reverse from the back. In, and we back, nice, up, side, bring the top, do to the side, flex and point, point, close, and in, to the front, inside, side, and fours arch. Rotating from the hip, going towards the front, and stick arms out, descend, and we stand. Beautiful. Let's go over to the left and wait for the maestro to begin the music. Same idea. Standing tall away from the hips, we go front. Repeat now, adding your into third position, one, two, three, third position, and getting ready to go two to the front, three and a four, three to the side. Now watch the third time, we rotate in, rotate out, and hold it to the side, and you're gonna do a demi rond de jambe to the back, and shut it close. Reverse, two, going to the back, pond, you, everything, is on the earth, third time, rotate in, rotate out, and show it, rotate to the front, and close. The second time, re repeat, but now with our port de bras, side, in, side, in, side, rotate in, rotate out, and to the back with the arm. To the back, now you're ready to, to go to the back, three to the side, Side turn it in, turn it out, hold, carry front, six, seven, eight. Just uh, let's actually come into a susurella, but I believe we have time. If not, just hold and finish, and I'm gonna go over to the left, okay? Follow along with me, here we go, third position, and two tongues to begin, going to the front. Third time, we rotate in, rotate
or to disengage. Simply, we're going to take four degrees to the front, four to the side each time, then two, then two, then one. One no change, one and change. Then to the back, back four, four, reverse it, side four, four, keep changing each time, two, two, now one, don't change one and change them. We're going to repeat that pattern one more time, adding our quarter bras, okay, twice through. And um, we might not have time at the end to do a balance, so we don't have to do it. And then we can just go over to the left, okay? Four, four, two, two, one, one, no change, one and change, reverse twice through. Four, four, just two. Just two, one, no change, one, and change, reverse, two, two, no change, I put a rod you wish, So let's go over to the other side. It's fast. Here we go. to the side, closing front, then coupe out and in, coupe cheval in, third time plie, carry demi rond, back same thing, coupe out and in, coupe out plie on it and carry to the side, same thing on qua, closing back, slow pas de chevals, carry front and in. Stretching forward, stretching back, plie up. Let's take our passe today to find your balance in passe or rotary. Okay, very very simple. Just to break down the mechanics of how to do a proper pas de cheval or step of the horse. Follow me. Here we go. Coupe, lift, Thank you. 
our round jump combination. Simply, we're gonna pick up into passe, descend to the back, reverse, coming to the front, side hondu, in plie, and recover, and lift quarter back one, and slow, then two, and three, four, and five, and six, we close, reverse, up, 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 down, down, down. You can even add your arm if you wish to. And a plie, and ascend it to the side, carry up, straighten, and a one. Slow, a turn, then we speed it up, four, six, and a seven, and a close. Circle, circle, inside foot lunge, stretch it out. Uh, to the back, come right to the back. Tight Susie, let's try a posse balance one more time and come out of it and finish, okay? So um, to begin, it's two posse pick up, side stretch, return, one slow, six quicker, then reverse all that, circle port bra, circle port bra, inside for lunge back, stretch it to the back, up, find a balance one more time, either pirouette position or posse position. Adding the arm if you wish. Slow. Now speed up. Reverse from the back. 
let's get ready to immediately test our heart rate right after this exercise because it will be our last exercise of today's class, our Grand Bat Mont. So immediately following the end of the left side, come over here, get ready to test your pulse either at your wrist or by your neck, all right? So we're gonna do a very simple Grand Bat Mont exercise in third, three to the front, big beating or big kicks, then from here, we're going to do a super so, which is a saute or jump. You're just going to jump up and land back into third. Same thing to the side. One, much slower than that. Two, three, arms up and jump. Then back, up for three. Then jump, then side. Again, two, three, and jump. It's simply a little saute or jump up and down. Uh, you don't have to beat or cross your fifth at all. Just up and down. Try to pull your toes and land softly without crashing, okay? Three to the front jump, three to the side jump, three to the back jump, three to the side. Instead of jumping, we're gonna just walk over to the left or transition to the left side immediately. So we can do to the, to the left three jumps, three to the side jump, three to the back jump, three to the side, and then just walk back. And then we're going to come over here and test out our heart rate. Okay? Here we go. Good luck. And. Start my countdown as soon as you see the number on the screen. Begin. You're counting. Really awesome dancers. Um, so I would like to know, as a way to wrap up our class today, I would love to know what is your number difference, right? So you got your resting heart rate at the beginning of our class, and now you have what's called, what I call it, the activated heart rate, right? It's not necessarily your target heart rate, but it could be your heart um, target heart rate. So I want to know, please send it into the chat or the comment box down below. What was your number at resting heart rate and what was your number now, right, at the activated heart rate? And what is your maximum heart rate, extra bonus points if you can give me that, and also what is your target heart rate, okay? And as long as you are in that target heart rate zone, that just means that you are doing an awesome job, right? I don't know about you, but one way to tell that my heart rate went up is the sweating element to, to dancing, to ballet. Um, and just overall, you just know it, right? I don't even have to know for sure what my number was at resting to know that I certainly increased my heart rate just by testing how quickly um, my, my pulsing was, was beating, right? So it should be very, very pronounced. So I hope today you really enjoyed our class today and that you walked away with a little piece of uh, fitness knowledge in addition to some ballet. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel already, please subscribe today. And if you want to share this channel um, to your friends, family, please do so as well. I would love that. And if you could give us a like, that would be even more awesome. So until the next episode, dancers, I hope you guys had a blast. 
remember dancers, to always stay hydrated and keep on practicing your ballet technique. I hope you had a great experience today and also learned something new. I hope to see you next time. For now, adios, take care, and see you next time. Bye-bye.